A very common viewpoint amongst Pokemon fans today is that the best generations were generations 4 and 5, released on the Nintendo DS. And it's easy to see why. The art style, especially in generation 5, was probably some of the best that we had seen for the series up to that point. The way in which 3D environments were mixed with 2D sprites was absolutely masterful. But how exactly would you create a world like that? That's what we're going to talk about today. For those of you who don't know, for the past six or so months, I have been working on creating a kit to create Pokemon games in Unreal Engine 5. And as part of that, I needed a way to create maps like the DS game. So I had initially conceived of this kit just being a 2D kit. It's overkill for Unreal Engine, but it's a lot easier to create 2D games than it is to create 3D games. However, as I was working, it started to become obvious to me that like, okay, this is a 3D engine, might as well take advantage of what it has to offer. But instead of making something that looks like the modern games, because that is definitely how you draw Nintendo's eye towards you, I'd rather create something that looks like the DS games. So I pivoted to create games of that style. But that brought up an issue for me. What tools are there to create maps in the game? Furthermore, what can I do inside the engine itself to create maps? So the first thing I did was take a look at how exactly the environments in the games are constructed. And what I found out was that the environments are constructed as large models. Each map is essentially a single model. And that makes sense. It's actually more efficient to render one large model than a bunch of smaller models. But that makes it harder to create your own maps with. So I needed a tool that could actually allow you to create maps. And ultimately what I ended up finding was a tool used for ROM hackers called Pokemon DS Map Studio. And this started to become the basis for how I was going to bring this into the engine. I initially was using it just to pull out tile assets, but eventually as I was working, I'm like, this is really tedious. The way you would edit the world in the editor just was not super efficient. So it's like, we need a better way to do this. Are there any tools like that? And the answer is yes, but they're pretty much all paid. And given that part of my desire for this kit is that anyone can just download it and use it, I didn't want to tether it to any paid marketplace assets. And so for a while, I thought there was just nothing I could use. I toyed around with a few different features in the editor, but none of them really seemed to bring me what I wanted. Eventually, I got to the point where I was like, okay, let's just create my own tile map editor, and it'll be kind of crude. It won't be like super professional looking, but it will get the job done. And that's what I did. I started creating essentially an editor utility widget and started sort of building off of that to start editing tile maps in the world. But quickly it became obvious that there were things in that tool that I wanted to be able to do that I wasn't sure how to do it. And so kind of overwhelmed and not sure where to proceed, I started looking around again just to be like, okay, is there any way I can do this with the tools already afforded to me? And that's when I found something interesting. This four minute video with no sound seems to demo exactly what I was looking for. In fact, probably better than what I would have ended up creating. And so I was like, okay, is this available? Can I use this myself? And the answer was yes, kinda. So if you look at the GitHub repo for this particular plugin, it's noted by the creator that they consider Unreal Engine's modeling tools to be better than what they created. And I was like, can the modeling tools really do what is necessary? And so I did a little bit more digging and I found that, yeah, you kinda can do it with the modeling tools, but that's not quite what I had in mind. I wanted essentially, like the video showed, a paintbrush where you could just drag the mouse over the world and it would add tiles. And so I decided to return to it and see like, okay, maybe I can download this get it building and see what it has to offer. And when I downloaded it, it initially did not compile, some due to differences between the version of Unreal Engine that it was written in and Unreal Engine 5.4, and a couple others because I'm compiling in C++20, and the creator used some things that are not allowed in that version of the language anymore. But once those were resolved, I could get it to build and fired up the engine and was 
actually kind of impressed with what I saw. There were definitely a few things that I needed to tweak, but it seemed workable. So what exactly did I change from that iteration? So the first thing I did was I changed the size of that cursor because it was fixed to be a 100 by 100 by 100 cube. And given that in the Pokemon games, I'm using 16 by 16 as my grid size, I needed a much smaller cursor size. So I eventually started toying around and was able to alter it so that the cube is scaled to the size of the tiles. And from there, there were a few things I noticed were missing. The first two was there was no ability to edit at varying heights. And the second was that you couldn't put multiple tiles on top of each other because in my final conception of this, I wanted you to be able to essentially color in all of the ground and then you could start adding additional things on top of it like trees. So those were the first two things that I added. The next thing I had to deal with is that the trees are actually four times as big as a single tile. It's two by two rather than one by one. So I needed to have the ability to add tiles that actually took up multiple tiles. And so that was the next thing I did. And that took a little bit more maneuvering to get done. And so the next thing from there I needed to work out was, okay, I now have all the tools I need to create a world, but there's a bit of a problem with the editor. I can't see what any of the tiles look like in the tile palette. And so that required a little bit of toying and what I found was that it was largely due to a change between, I guess, between Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5 with how the thumbnail renderer is set up. And it ultimately boiled down to them removing a parameter from one of the functions and uh, thanks to C++ having implicit conversions between Booleans and numeric types, uh, the compiler didn't complain. By removing that one argument, I was able to get the thumbnails to show, but the thumbnails were not showing at the perfect angle that I wanted. Because as part of this, some of my tiles are the exact same model, just rotated. And so I needed to actually create a custom version of the static mesh thumbnail renderer that would enable me to render it with its rotation. So what I had to do was actually had to duplicate a lot of the engine's code for the thumbnail renderer and then make a few tweaks to it to basically add the tiles rotation to the renderer. With that done though, and then I also decided to rotate it to a top-down perspective. That way, at least in my head, you'd have a better idea of what was what. There were definitely a few cases though where it's hard to tell which direction is what until you actually paint it. But with all of that, I was able to essentially create a 3D version of a map from an old abandoned RPG Maker XP fan game that I was working on. There were a few other challenges though to that map creation. One is that while this tool actually had the ability to do auto tiling, it was kind of unintuitive how you did it. And a lot of the tools in the DS map editor that I was using to essentially create my version didn't really support the full range of auto tiles that I needed to work with. So I had to do a little bit of playing around with Unreal Engine's modeling tools to essentially build my auto tiles. Once I had created those, I also created a script to make it easier to set that up. You just essentially put in the 15 tiles in a specific order, and then it just automatically builds your auto tiles for you, which is helpful because you need 47 tiles. With all of that, I have gotten to the point where at least for now, I'm going to move on to other things but there's definitely things that I envision I might do with this in the future. Probably one of the next things I'm gonna do is create essentially like a tile loadout. So you could actually like group together the various tiles and then just select that and that will automatically fill your palette. And that way it might be a little bit easier to figure out which direction is which because they're just in a predetermined order. So you created the loadout so you should theoretically know what order you put everything in. That's probably one thing I do. I'm also gonna probably make another modification to tether it to a terrain tag system. That way I can tie it into things like, oh, this tile is for the tall grass. And so that means that if you're walking through these tiles, you can have a random encounter. You could also have support for things like say, jumping off of ledges, which is a fairly common thing in the Pokemon games. And also things like ice tiles, because you know, ice is fun. Everyone loves ice, right? 
also obviously things like surf, uh, water tiles, and being able to change the collision and movability around. I might uh, I might also add essentially like collision data as well. So instead of having to have the actual 2D, the actual 3D collision of the various tiles be used to determine whether or not you can move onto another tile, it can just check for the movement data on the tile you're facing and see, am I allowed to move off of the tile I'm currently on onto that tile based on that movement data? That would be something that would simplify things a lot and you wouldn't have to mess around with the collision as much because that's definitely one thing I have been running into is the default collision on a lot of things sometimes messes with the grid-based movement. And so that's definitely something that's going to need to be worked out sooner or later. And it also would help with being able to set collision on, say, water tiles and then turning it off when you use surf. But with all of that, I think that's more or less everything I wanted to show for now. I will probably continue to just sort of post updates like this about this project because this is literally everything I do with my time now. But other than that, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys around with more updates. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see stuff like that. Thank you.